Multiple groups that took part in Wednesday's protest against repression in Colombo convened a media briefing in Colombo on Thursday. The protest was a success. Although the government assumed it would not allow us to proceed, we have challenged them. Multiple pro-government groups have started to sling mud against us. We will not be discouraged. The government wants to defeat our united stance. Political groups with opposing views banded together and we won our right to protest. We must clearly state that the pawn of the government infiltrated the protest and were ready to sling mud at us. There was tense situation over whether to move ahead or hold a rally. The media is trying to highlight the various incidents. Our united stance has not broken and we will continue ahead. We wish to tell Ranil and his group that our agreement have not been shattered and we will continue our struggle against repression. It was the people's voice that represented the protest yesterday. It was not to bring Sajid Tomai Tripal Sirisen into power. This protest is a turning point in Sri Lanka's future politics. There was no such incident. The leaders of all parties were present and no one had protested against the leader of the opposition or other parties. Because we all came together with one goal to defeat the repression, to repeal the Terrorism Prevention Act, someone started to hoot at the police. Then there was debate whether to go past the barriers or not. In the letter given by the senior police officer Dilrup, it stated that we cannot go past that barrier. We suspect there were 10 to 15 people who were from the security forces who told us to break barriers and to go forward. The extent of the lack of unity among these groups is such that even after discussing together on what is to be done and organizing the protest yesterday, in the end the group including the opposition leader was jeered and chased away by the same group. Not only the opposition leader but leaders and members of other parties had to also face this situation. This is a very sad state of affairs because the opposition leader is facing multiple situations like this. I would like to remind the opposition leader that the position of opposition leader is not owned by you. Many other people will hold this position in the future. You should act honorably to preserve the status of this position for a person who may assume this position in the future so that he may be accorded some sort of respect. You are the fourth citizen in the country. Please protect the integrity of this position. People who were against this used their cronies and attempted to depict some sort of opposition against us. We know the people who were behind this. They are the groups who were always against us. They are a very small group. The leader of our party and the group from the opposition who went there wanted to stage a protest free of any violence and we did that. We are happy that we were able to bring all these factions from the opposition to one place and stage this protest. People who are hurt by this are making various statements now. We don't care about what they say. We have never seen an opposition leader being jeered like that before at a protest rally. We saw something like this happening for the first time. This happened because the opposition leader did not understand the mandate of the people. I do not see this as a rejection of the opposition leader. He went to extend his support to this, but several factions at the protest wanted him to take some other kind of action. That is not something weird. I do not see this as a rejection of the opposition leader. I am of the stance that the opposition leader attending the protest strengthened the movement. None of us are of the stance that we will only work with people who agree with us. 100%. These sort of politicians who are trying to use the situation in the country to their advantage must be rejected. We saw a woman living in Kolonava performing an act. 
The people stood up against these kind of actions. The people got out to the streets saying that all 225 must go home. Therefore, we kindly request each and every one of you, do not bring the people out to the streets to fulfill your own party agendas. If Ranil Rajapaksa thinks that he can continue to suppress the people like this and continue to rule the country for the remaining two and a half years, I would like to warn you that it is the women of this country who will chase you away just like they chased away Gotabe Rajapaksa. This will happen very soon. You are shortening your own political career. If Ranil Rajapaksa thinks that he has won after trying to stop our movement, that is nothing but a joke. The reason for the people to jeer at him is because they attempted to stage a protest and send a wrong message to the international community that there are many issues in Sri Lanka and that the people are fighting on the streets and cannot travel on the roads so that they can prevent tourists coming to Sri Lanka during this season. Usually we witness state-sponsored violence, repression and terrorism attacking the protest. But this time around there was no such thing. We wanted to defeat the government's tactics. We were not deceived by their various ploys. The government wanted us to incite the violence and to claim that it was not a peaceful protest but an act of violence. Some pro-government groups were waiting to incite violence yesterday. I stepped up and stopped it. The Samagi Janabalavegya-led alliance is the shadow government. Even when in opposition, this shadow government acts with responsibility. I lead from the front and not from the back. A small group wanted to incite violence yesterday. I request them to follow a separate political path if that is their desire. We are not prepared for those. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa expressed these views while donating the 39th bus to the Galgamo UB Vaninaika National School under the Sakwala program.